r slash ask reddit what's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you or someone you know serious this happened about three years ago or so i was sitting in the kitchen and it was around 10 pm or so i heard a really loud thump in the basement i live alone with two dogs so any sound is somewhat frightening to me so as i'm walking down the stairs to the basement i hear the thumping again in an oddly rhythmic pattern i creak open the door into the basement bedroom and i see my dog is just ramming his head and body into the wall over and over i can't explain to you how shockingly unnatural looking it was it looked like he was controlled or something I called him over, and he stopped and came upstairs with me. The hours later, I hear the thumping again. I get out of bed again. However, when I went down to check it, it was my other dog that was ramming his head into the wall. It was like he was possessed. Scared the cheese out of me. Since then, nothing like that has happened. But what an unexplainable event. Somehow this is the creepiest story yet. I feel like a big part of what makes it so freaky is that it's something so familiar. We love our pets and see them every day, and in some cases even look to them for protection. But to see something you love and rely on as a constant daily presence acting so unnatural and uncanny valley is just beyond eerie. Definitely gives me the shivers and I sure hope the pups are okay. I worked with a girl who casually told the story of someone almost kidnapping her little sister. One day she walked outside to tell her six-year-old sister to come inside. And her sister was climbing into the open door of a car at the end of the driveway. My co-worker screamed and the car drove off without the sister. I have a one-and-a-half-year-old daughter now and the thought of this as she gets older is just so terrifying. Obviously we teach kids not to trust strangers like that. But kids are dumb, ya yeah, no. I was midway through a 12-hour road trip alone driving all my college apartment stuff back to my parents' house. Car was totally overpacked with boxes. A bike, keyboard, and the like. I'm very low on gas. So I pull over to a gas station in the middle of nowhere town. Georgia, sun is dipping low, and the gas station is empty. Just off the side of the main road intersecting the highway. Few cars meander past on that road. But it's a quiet town. As I'm pumping gas. A scraggly thin guy walks up and starts mumbling about asking for the time. I tell him the time and make small talk. But not a word this man said was intelligible. All the while, he's circling the car and commenting on my stuff. But, again, I can't really understand his words too clearly. I make an excuse to duck into the convenience base store. Which I needed to do anyways, my bike was rattling loose and I wanted a bungee cable to affix it more securely. As I go into the store and search for a cable, I notice Scraggly Man also entered and he's now talking with the clerk of the store. On a scale of 1 to meh, the Scraggly Man was like a 8.5, but she's hardly even a 5 on that scale. Much more trustworthy, while something about that guy gave me the creeps. Anyways, I find my cable and as I approach the register, she makes small talk about noting my car overpacked and asked if I was moving somewhere. All the like. She asks about the cable and I explain it's to secure my bike more firmly. She then tells me I should drive my car behind the gas station and they'll help me tie it up tight. Speaking in the plural, implying what I kinda already deduced. She and the man are associates somehow. Again, my car is just outside the window of the shop. In clear view of the main road. She tells me I should drive it behind the building. Where nobody could see it. For them to help me tie it up as though that help couldn't be done in the normal refueling area. At this point, my GTFO meter is maxing out at 3.4 rungeon so I thank her but tell her I'll be okay. And then I practically jog to my car and get in, locking the doors immediately. As I leave, I watch through the window as the woman and man are in a very animated conversation, gesticulating towards my fleeing vehicle. Could I have been paranoidly misreading these people because they kinda looked like myth heads? Sure, but making an offer that sketchy is not a very normal thing to do. You were not misreading anything man. I was at my uncle's house in some countryside with my sister and we were playing hide and seek. My uncle went out to buy some food for us. I was hiding downstairs in this weird closet attic thing I found. I heard a little banging noise and got a little spooked. 
I then chalked it up to a little rat or something and continued to hide. I then heard a snore and a groan. I immediately got out and ran to my sister. We both sat at the door together, crying, until my uncle got home. My uncle just laughed it off and we were relieved. A decade later, an old man's dead body was found when my uncle tried to sell the house. It was revealed he was squatting there for almost a decade and he had written in a notebook how he was going to kill my uncle and keep the home for himself. And I think that would have happened if he didn't die. I'm a biologist that often has to do fieldwork surveying unmaintained private properties in the middle of nowhere. Long story short, we find a body face up in a stream deep in a thickly wooded wetland. The body looked several months old. At least. No clothes. No tools. No shelter. Nothing nearby to suggest who he is or how he got there. We couldn't even tell race or gender from what we saw. We call the police and they immediately tell us it's probably the missing person who ditched his car nearby. They apparently searched for weeks with dogs, horses, and ATVs but didn't find any sign of the guy. All they found was his family car loaded with cash and a handgun. They also tell us he seemed to be running from someone or something. Real or imagined they weren't sure. Apparently the man didn't even close his car door, just ditched it at a rail crossing and took off running into the woods in a tremendous hurry. I find his clothes about 30 yards up the stream bank from where the body was found. His pants were neatly folded and placed on top of his nice brown loafers. Underpants and socks on top of those. He placed his glasses atop his socks. Very orderly and in a nice pile. His shirt and undershirt were hanging from a tree branch right above those as if to dry. I mean, the whole thing creeps me out even a year on. But what unsettles me is the fact that he ran from his family drove several hours from his home, ditched his car, and fought a mile through briars and thick woods only to stop and carefully fold and hang his clothes before meeting his end. I look him up every now and then and still can't find any more info about what happened or why. My friend got into a bad car accident and hit his face on the windshield. He then started filming and noticed that literally half of his face could be peeled off. It was a very clean cut. Just half of the skin hanging there. It wasn't separated though and he got a lot of stitches and recovered completely. During traumatic situations you often don't feel any pain. Edit. Yes I saw the video. When my cousin was a teenager, maybe 18 or 19, she and her friends went out to party a lot. In my country you can legally start drinking with 16 18 So most teenagers start going to clubs at 16. Back then, hitchhiking was still pretty common and most teenagers did it to get home or to the city. Since only very few had cars of their own. So my cousin and her friend want to go home after a night out and get picked up by a middle-aged guy. He's nice enough and they make small talk. While they drive, suddenly, he takes a turn onto a remote road leading into the woods. He locks the car from the inside and his friendly facade falls. Instead he's suddenly tense quiet and determined. My cousin's friend started crying quietly. But my cousin stays calm and starts talking to the man. She tells him about her family. Her mom and dad. Her brother and sister and asks if he also has a family. When he tells her that he has a wife and two children. She asks for their names and how old they are. Which school they go to. What their hobbies are. All while he drives them deeper into the woods. It must have triggered something, because after talking with him for a couple of minutes, he stops his car and breaks down. He starts crying and tells them that things are going well at home. That his marriage is pretty bad and he fears he'll lose his kids. My cousin comforts him during his breakdown and lets him spill his heart out. Eventually, he starts the car again, turns around and drives them home, saying he's sorry. They get out once they reach the street my cousin lived on and when he drives off. My cousin sees him put a knife on the passing a seat that he had kept hidden next to him. They never hitchhiked again. Holy duck. Quick thinking on your cousin's end. That literally just saved their lives. Talk about de-escalating like a pro. This reminds me of Austrian triathlete Natalie Burley. Two weeks after giving birth she went out cycling. A man rammed her with his car. Beat her. And then kidnapped her. He locked her in his closet before she passed out. She woke up naked and tied to a chair where he tortured her. She then noticed his orchids and told him she thought they were beautiful and his entire demeanor changed. 
He told her he was a gardener and they eventually started talking about his painful relationships with his parents and ex-girlfriends who betrayed him. Natalie then asks him to not kill her because her newborn son needs her and to imagine what it would have been like for him. The kidnapper. To grow up without a mother. She then suggests that they both agree that this whole fiasco was just an accident instead. He eventually drives her home and the police tracked him down and arrested him. In both of these cases, these men felt betrayed by their romantic partner and felt the need to vent their anger through violence. Their victims were able to escape through empathizing with them. I don't know what the moral of the story is. When I was a child in New Hampshire I went exploring by myself and got lost in the woods. I was not worried about it in the least. And was just walking around. All of a sudden, I noticed someone standing about 25 feet away from me. And he was just standing perfectly still facing me. He was all bundled up in a bunch of shirts and jackets. One over the other over the other. And his face was completely hidden by what looked like dirty rags. He was wearing big flat lensed goggles. He just stood there staring at me. I stared back for a few seconds and then turned and ran. Maybe 30 minutes later I managed to find my way back to the edge of the lake. And was able to get back to where we were staying. My old bedroom is right next to the front door of the house, same floor too, so I often see people coming up to the door and can go greet them easily or see any deliveries. A few years ago we got ding dong ditched, do they still call it that? A few kids ran up to our door at 9 pm. Slammed on the door and then ran into the woods across the street. I own some powerful flashlights. Spotted them easily. And told them to get the hell out of my sight. They did it an hour later and I heard them coming up to the door and laugh as they ran away. We called non-emergency number and it turns out an officer was already coming out here because we weren't the first to call. Here's where the creepy part comes in. Now it's two nights later. No issues the night before. It's about 2 am. Now, I'm still awake lying in bed. And I hear heavy footsteps approach the door followed by slamming on it and someone running away. I was nowhere near falling asleep and could tell it was a hell of a lot louder than the kids who pranked us a few nights before. I also took note that there was a single set of footsteps and no laughing children this time. We called non-emergency again and they sent a patrol car quickly. One officer came to our door to talk while the other went around the house to see if someone was hiding in our yard. Turns out it could have been someone trying to break in because our area was having issues with burglaries. They prank you to see if you're home. If you answer the door, then someone is home and they pick another house. If no one answers, then it's safe to break in. They said it was a possibility because it had happened twice in the neighborhood in the past few months. Those kids must have been caught and given a serious lesson about what was happening. Otherwise, the police would have probably assumed it was them again. What was really creepy was thinking about how that person was just on the other side of the wall outside from where I was in my room. I had trouble falling asleep for a while after that. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please help the channel by smashing the like button and subscribing for more daily content.